Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. Welcome back to another episode of Mod Chat. And if you're checking out the visual, I'm going to be honest, I did not expect to be taking a look at something here so soon. In fact, you could even see if you saw the last episode of Mod Chat, like I had some facial hair going on, I shaved because I was thinking like, oh, it's probably going to be another week or two until I record something. It's fine. And then, uh, no, there were a couple pretty exciting things I wanted to cover and talk about on here. So that's what we're going to get into. But in case you do not know, Mod Chat is a podcast I do at least monthly here on the Mr. Mario 2011 YouTube channel, as well as on most major podcasting platforms if you're wanting an audio-only version of it. Simply look up Mod Chat, all one word, and you should hopefully be able to find it and take it with you wherever the hell you want to go or wherever you want to listen to it. Now, typically, I don't do multiple Mod Chats in one week, and in all honesty, I was actually going to be releasing a video. I was, I was actually going to start covering this thing. Like, look at this. Isn't this cool? Look at this. Yeah. The Switch. I was going to start covering this thing right here. Not like super in-depth things. You'll you'll see it when you see it. It's more going to be like hardware stuff like this. But either way, I was going to start on that this weekend, but uh, I'm going to be pushing that video to the next video release. So you all will still see that, of course. But either way, let's go ahead and take a look at these topics here that we're taking a look at because we're taking a look at stuff from the PlayStation 1 all the way to the PlayStation 4. But just a couple things. Now, to get this out of the way here quickly to many people's excitement and just kind of to get this out there as well too and to kind of give my recommendations, Slayer's Govi has come through yet again. In case you do not know this gentleman, he has most recently been known for releasing the 6.72 PlayStation 4 jailbreak as well as the 7.02 PlayStation 4 jailbreak. Well, he has been working on the latest jailbreak thanks to the partial disclosure that we've gotten working up to 7.55 from the flow and that had come through the hacker one bounty on uh, Sony's or PlayStation's bounty so to speak but either way he ended up tweeting this today which is a link to a mega download and he states 7.50 expects payload on 9020 slash TCP, applied patches, MMAP, MProtect, syscall everywhere, kernel execution, delayed panics. Note, there is no Mira slash hen for 7.50 yet. So what does this mean right here? For anyone that does not know, there is now a 7.50 public jailbreak for the PlayStation 4. This is a kernel exploit. This is a web exploit. This is all tied together for a jailbreak. Now, notice that I mentioned 7.55, but this is saying 7.50. Well, down here, Slayer's Gove was even responding to someone saying, I wish it was 7.55. And he responded here saying, we'll probably come in a few more days, but this is not a promise. And just for date sake here, I'm recording this on March 12th when it was released, and this will be going out March 13th. So perhaps we'll see something updated for 7.55 soon. Hopefully it will be soon on here. Uh, because either way, I don't think anybody was expecting something for 7.50, but this is a great release nonetheless to see here, so congratulations and thank you to Slayer's Govi for this. If you download the zip file, you're going to see several JavaScript files, a C file, a webkit.750 folder, as well as a index.html. And this is really if you want to take these and put them up on a locally hosted web server or whatever server you want to use, if you want to host this web page, connect to it on your 7.50 firmware PlayStation 4, and attempt to jailbreak it, you can definitely do that. Note that it has to be on firmware 7.50 for this to work, and again, it's kind of limited right now because there's no Mira and no Hen, the homebrew enabler. Neither of those are available for 7.50. Uh, people weren't really preparing for anything for 7.50. Everything was targeting 7.55 from what I see. Now, it's absolutely great that we have this release, so now the latest public working jailbreak for the PlayStation 4 is on 7.50. However, right now, because it is so early, I would advise waiting. At the moment, just immediately right now, there's no Mira, there's no Hen, as I've quoted and said a few times now at this point. And on top of that, it doesn't seem like there was really much preparation for 7.50. Uh, everyone was more targeting 7.55. Hopefully, we're going to get that at a later date here from Slayer's Govi or someone else if they want to chime in. Uh, but regardless, we still have this right now. It's just, if you're going Going to be using it it's probably not going to be the most stable thing if you do get the jailbreak successfully working there's not too much you can use on it right now so unless you're really wanting to develop for it work on it test it do anything like port payloads port applications whatever
whatever it might be, your best bet is going to be just wait on this. I am going to be monitoring this here and see what hosts are going to be utilizing it, see the success rate, see how well it might work. And uh, my prediction though, is that people are probably still going to be waiting, both users and developers will probably still wait for 7.55, just because that is the latest firmware that we have anything that could potentially work on publicly like that is the latest latest so that's why right now people are probably waiting if anybody has noticed as well too it seems like 7.02 was a little bit quiet even though before this 7.02 was the latest working jailbreak available uh, not only stability was still kind of there kind of not depending on the host you're using the console a few other settings as well too uh, but on top of that it feels like a lot of people are more waiting for a 7.55 jailbreak to release um, so just waiting on development and stability and everything to get on that however again if you want to try it out yourself if you have a playstation 4 on firmware 7.50 exactly that number nothing higher nothing lower if it's on 7.50 you can download the files you can host this yourself you can try this out and maybe even report back in the comments on the video here and tell us how it's worked out for you. If anybody, last thing, if anybody is saying, hey, I want to update my 7.02 or 6.72 or 5.05 PS4 or anything in between there, I want to update to 7.50 and try it, I wouldn't advise updating either. Just wait for everything to get updated. Wait for everything to stabilize. Let's analyze this first. Let's see what's going on over the course of the next few days, maybe even weeks, and then we can give some better recommendations. Now the next thing here, and honestly the thing that I am more excited about, just because this is honestly something that I had dreamed of having, and I'm sure many other people dreamed of having from the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, and really any console, but specifically the PlayStation 1 and 2. Tony Hacks ended up releasing, of all things, and this was just kind of a super quiet release. I, I did not see anything about this. In fact, I'm even going to show you all, I found out about this from MVG this morning. He ended up tweeting this saying, yes, I'll be covering PS1 Tony Hacks on the channel. I had no idea what he was talking about. So I had to look up Tony Hacks, PS1 Tony Hacks, Tony Hacks PS1, and I ended up finding this video, which is Tony Hacks, a soft mod backup loader for the Sony PlayStation. Now this here is a video, and there's also an accompanying write-up from Marcos Vivas del Sol, otherwise known as Socram8888. And right here, he is just showing that he has a PS1, so one of the slim PlayStations, that is not opened, not modified in any way, and he's able to load up a copy of, or original copy here, of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, and through using a exploited save game, he's then able to get into a backup loader, and from there, load up a backed up game, which is a copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, on a CDR. This is really cool to see here. So right off the bat, this is not like free DVD boot that we saw on the PlayStation 2, in which if you have a DVD disc, if it has a piece of homebrew, if it has an emulator, for example, if it has even a retail game that has been patched properly, if it has any of those games and it has been patched properly with free DVD boot, you can just take it, pop it into a compatible PlayStation 2, and it boots up like that. It's not that seamless here. This is a save game exploit. This means that with the actual PlayStation console itself, nothing is being touched on the PlayStation. Nothing's being modified on the actual console itself, and you don't have to do any modifications. You don't have to install any chips. You don't have to block any sensors. You don't have to put a spring in that back sensor there. Uh, really, all you need is a memory card and of course an exploit game. And there's two exploit games which are available right now, which is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 3, but there's also some limitations on this. Now I'm showing this PlayStation here, this one I'm not going to demonstrate on, oh yes, we are going to get to a demonstration, don't worry. But it's not going to be on one of these PlayStations, but this is to represent that this works on every single PAL PlayStation. So if you're across the pond and you have a PlayStation, congratulations, this will work on every single PlayStation. However, if you are in a NTSCU region, it'll work on every PlayStation except the 1001 models, uh, which are the ones that have the RCA ports in the back here. So the very first run of original PlayStations, it's not going to work on if you're in the NTSCU territory, but every PlayStation after this one, all the way up to the latest PS1 or the PlayStation 
PlayStation Slim, PS1 Slim, whatever you want to call it, it's going to work on there. And odd enough, but unfortunately, and there is reason for this, this will not work on any Japanese PlayStation. So I thought I had a perfect contender here where this is a completely unmodified 9001. Big shout out and thank you to the previous co-host, Devin, otherwise known as Paranoid Coder. He actually gave this to me for Christmas. It was a late Christmas present because I got it recently, but regardless, this was cool to have, but this does not work on any Japanese PlayStations, and it will be explained. I also did want to add in here something that was answered and something I'm sure is going to get asked. Somebody ended up asking in the comments of the YouTube upload here, does this work on PS2 as well? And Marcos ended up replying, a chap on Reddit has tried it and apparently no. The back door this uses is only present in European PS1 and most American ones. Neither Japanese PS1 nor any PS2s can use this. So for anybody asking if this is going to work on a PlayStation 2, nope. This is your answer right here. It's PlayStation 1 exclusive. Now over at Marcos's site, he actually has a really great write-up covering this here, and we're just going to read some parts of this. So this is called Tony Hacks, a software backup loader exploit thing for the Sony PlayStation 1. Why? The first question that might pop up on your mind regarding this project is, why the fuck didn't you just install a mod chip? The answer is simple. I didn't want to mod my mint boxed PS1, but I didn't want to leave it rotting on a shelf either. Also, as the owner of a SCPH-102 console, these are a pain in the ass when it comes to chipping. In addition to the generic SCEX wobble check performed by the CD controller that is easily patchable, the boot menu on these also checks for the region string, which involve installing even more wires and a full-sized Arduino Pro Mini or AT Mega 328 chip to patch the CPU BIOS to play out-of-region games. Not cool. How does this work? In layman's terms, this exploit uses an oversight from the programmers. The game does not check that the skater name in the save file hasn't been tampered and fits in the space the program allocated for it. If we externally change the username to something longer, we can overwrite other vital parts of the memory and run our own code. You might have caught it. I was kind of trying to not to laugh a little bit here, just because this is... <laughs> This is the same thing as what happened with Twilight Princess on the Wii, in a way, where Epona, uh, that was the same thing. It was not checking to see if the horse's name was past a certain character length. So if they ended up just putting a, like, taking the save file and messing with Epona's name and putting a super long name in there, it would end up breaking the game and could lead to an exploit when you loaded that save. Now it's saying here, in more technical terms, this exploit consists of a specifically crafted save game with high scores replaced with a first stage payload of 144 bytes and an abnormally long skater name with the memory address of the first stage payload inserted. And it's saying here, when entering the skater customization menu, the menu is dynamically generated to include the saved skater names in a way like this, and it shows some code right here just as a demonstration. Essentially, if a string that's too long to overflow the buffer is specified, the buffer overflows and overwrites part of the stack as we want to, but then it gets hammered with periods. So once this is loading up the high scores menu, and it states here whose contents are also loaded with no checks from the memory card, and where we have the first stage payload. And we're even seeing it right there where it says Tony Hacks SPL, which is what we're going to download. That is the first stage payload, and its sole purpose is to load the secondary program loader, or SPL for short, from an additional save file in the memory card using the PS1 BIOS calls. Once loaded, it jumps straight to it. There we go, that's where the magic is happening. As the console is left in an inconsistent state, the SPL first reinitializes the system kernel, RAM, devices, etc. by using the very same calls the ROM executes during the booting of the consoles. After that, the GPU is reset once the GPU is ready again. This sets up the video to a resolution of 320 by 240 unpacks the 1BPP font from the BIOS ROM into VRAM, and draws the basic border and program name to know everything is working fine until this point. Now this next part that I'm going to explain actually has to do with why this does not work on a Japanese original PlayStation. So it says here, with a fully working screen, it then proceeds to unlock the CD drive to accept disks missing the SCEX signature, leveraging the CD BIOS unlock commands 
find, found by Martin Korth. These unlock commands are a sort of backdoor, and the drive, probably in order to keep them secret, returns an error instead of a successful message. The SPL is coded to expect a particular error to be returned, and will actually abort if the drive returns that it succeeded, or if it returns another unexpected error code. After unlocking it, it waits for the lid to be open and closed, allowing the user to insert a new CD, and after that the CD file system is reinitialized. It proceeds to read the system.cnf configuration file, reinitializes the kernel with the parameters the game needs, and finally loads the, and runs the game's main executable. Now, the reason why I mention that here is because in terms of compatibility, one thing I also forgot is NetYaroze consoles are not compatible. However, I don't have a NetYaroze console, so that is why I completely forgot about this here. And it states that this does not work on NTSC J consoles because of the stubbed slash bugged CD unlock command. So that's why I'd mentioned that previous part that I was talking about has something to do directly with this not working with Japanese consoles. And also even for the original SCPH-1000 series consoles, it states that the BIOS predates the introduction of the CD unlock command, so they're just a little too old for this. Now great, at this point every single thing can play PlayStation games. For the original PlayStation, you can do a swap trick with an original game, or you can install a mod chip pretty easily if you know how to solder properly, or you can, I mean, do anything else on there. Uh, there's even really cool things where this is the other soft mod that I've dubbed this as, uh, where what you can do is you can take one of these Game Shark cartridges or anything similar that goes in the parallel I.O. port on many of the original PlayStations prior to the 9000 series. You can take this, you can reflash it with Unirom, and at that point you can actually kind of do the same thing where it ends up booting up the program off of this cartridge here when you turn on the console, and you can use the CD unlock and lock commands to then boot up out of region and backup games easily enough. So you don't have to deal with swapping, you don't have to deal with chipping your system. The downsides to this are, of course, it does not work on every single original PlayStation, and it doesn't work on the Slims at all because this doesn't plug into the Slim like it physically can't. So what benefits does this have? Well, in regards to if you want to take an original PlayStation, you want to try out something like this, and you don't want to block sensors, and you don't want to take part of the system, and you don't want to solder any chips in there, this should work out beautifully. In terms of why the hell anybody would do this? Well, because we can. Like, this is really cool to see. As I said, it's not at the point where you can take a game, patch it, and dump it into the system and have it work. That would be the absolute dream, like we've seen with free DVD boot, or what you can accomplish with a mod chip if you're willing to chip your system. However, this is still something incredibly awesome and something that I've actually wondered for several years as well, too. There's been times where I've kind of been a little bit bored, and I just kind of look up for some reason, PlayStation 1 save game exploits just to see, hey, is this a thing that's possible or not? And we should actually touch up on that as well, too, because that's probably going to be the hardest part of all of this. How the hell do we get a save to a PlayStation memory card? So we're actually going to do this together because I have not tried this and I have been waiting to do this on camera and I guess on the video here to show you all from start to finish what we can do to accomplish this. So I have a PlayStation 1 Slim. This thing is completely unmodified. I have a flash drive. I'm not going to use the same one, but I've got a USB drive here. And where is a memory card? At least right now, I have a controller on the side and I have a copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. I actually just picked up Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 just so I can have that for this as well too. But it's fine because I already own Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And that's another thing here. If people are going to be looking into and researching more games, this is kind of an untapped territory here. So because the actual exploit and how this works and how it's written up is all out there, I have no doubt that there are so many other games out there that are going to be exploitable in the same way or a similar way that should hopefully be just as easy to port over and get up and running. Here's my memory card. This is the one we're going to use. Now, some people might be looking at the USB drive and asking, why the hell do you have a USB drive? Because you physically can't plug it into a PlayStation here, like, at all. And that's why we're going to be using another system. I'm actually going to be using a PlayStation 2 as my entry point. It's not going to be this exact one, but I'm going to be using a PlayStation 2 that has Fortuna loaded on the memory card, and I'm going to go in there, I'm going to transfer over the saves that we need over to the PlayStation 1 memory card, and then we're going to use the PlayStation 1. So already, there's going to be a, a decent... I mean, you're going to need... <laughs> 
You don't need this, but I would say probably the most accessible way of doing this is if you have two systems. But it's also mentioned much like the free McBoot or any other memory card exploits on the PlayStation 2. Once you have the exploit on one PlayStation memory card, you can copy it to all the other PlayStation memory cards you want to. You, the hardest thing for all of this is going to be getting it onto that initial memory card, but let's just go ahead and try this out. Again, I have not tried this, so this is going to be fun. All right, so I'm over on the Tony Hacks GitHub page, and I just wanted to point this out. Now, right now, again, I was alerted of this on March 12th. This is going to be going out on March 13th, this episode, and this is still being worked on because at least at the time of recording this, as of one hour ago, it looks like Socrum 8888 ended up adding support for NTSCU Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, although there's not a release on on there just yet so right now there's going to be seems like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, 3 and upcoming 4 are going to be exploitable which works just fine because still out of all those games the only one I currently have on hand is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 that I can work with so we're just going to go over to the releases page and right here, there's going to be a couple files to download. Well, technically three for me. I'm going to download both save games for both Tony Hawks. So the B-A-S-L-U-S packages here because I'm using the U-S versions. And I'm also going to download Tony Hawk's SPL. So I now have all three of these right here, but I need to get them transferred over. So I grabbed a flash drive. This one I actually used for the PlayStation Classic, but I'm just going to go ahead and format this thing. I'm going to format it to FAT32, that should work just fine, that's all okay. Alright, awesome. And if we go in here, we can just copy out all those three very large files, obviously large. Yeah, let's see, they're 8 kilobytes each. Uh, so we got those all transferred over, and at that point we're good, at least on the PC setup here, I would say. So I'll go ahead and eject that and uh, take my USB drive over to the PS2. So I've got my PS2 fired up and what I did first, I'm just going to uh, plug in my PS1 memory card and I don't see any saves here. I have enough free space here, so that's all good because we're going to need at least 16. No, we're actually we have enough. We have enough. I think we're going to be good here. Uh, actually, just to be safe, I'm going to delete out Game Shark save. I don't need that here. But either way, let's get out of all of this. And we're going to launch uh, the Fortuna exploit, which should bring us into U Launch Elf. So I'm just going to plug in my PS2 memory card, go to browser. Let me actually fully prepare this here. Pop that in and pop in my USB drive here. All right, got all that plugged in. So we should go here, have to go back, have to go back. And we're waiting. Here we go. Awesome. So I can go to the file browser, should be able to go to mass, and awesome, we have all of our saves right here. Now if I go to MC1, awesome as well. I'm able to access my PS1 saves. So I can go back here, I'll go over to mass, and I'm going to just, uh, actually, let me see, here. Okay, I can hit X to select all of those. I'm going to copy, Go back, go to MC1, I'll paste them all here. Should hopefully not take all too long. And there we go, we have all of them. So at this point we're all done. So I'm going to turn off the PS2 because I no longer need it. All right, so for this, I'm actually gonna do kind of a picture in picture. As you can see, I have the PlayStation 1 right here because I do want to demonstrate to you all that this thing is not modified. So I have it plugged in. You are going to see it in the background. It's firing up just fine. And I am armed with a few discs here. Now, of course I have the uh, memory card plugged in. But let's go ahead and take the game that I'm wanting to launch. So I got a copy of Silent Hill right here, and uh, I do have a backup of it, but first I'm going to play the original version. So let's pop this in. I'm going to turn the console off, turn it completely on. Unfortunately, I can't just hit the reset button because this is a original, well, PlayStation 1, PS1, excuse me. So let's see, it's booting up here. Here it's spinning. Do not fail on me now, PlayStation. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, is it really gonna do this? <laughs> I swear, I was just trying this out, and uh, it was working just fine, right off camera. But that's how this goes. I, 
I hear it. I hear it spinning. What the hell? This this literally just worked. Okay, let's try this one more time here. Hopefully third time's the charm. That sounded better. Okay. I know you all can't hear it, but I can hear it because it's like right next to me. There we go. Okay, cool. So I was able to pick it up just fine. So we're at the PlayStation screen. It's booting up. It got past the second check. And there we go, the game is booting up. And just to show you all that, again, I don't have any uh, sensors or anything blocked. If I end up opening up the cover here, the disc stops. The disc would keep spinning if I had any sensors blocked. But let's go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to grab my CDR copy of Silent Hill. And we're going to try and launch this. And it should give us that ugly red screen that we were seeing before. But let's just see here. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is what we would expect. This is a non-modded system. So let's go ahead and launch our Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. For this, I'm just going to take out our CDR. And our idea is we're going to be able to boot this up with a swap trick. So let me pop in Tony Hawk 2, turn off the system, turn it back on, and let's see what happens here. So yet again, the system is booting up just fine. Is it going? Yep, it's going. Got to this screen, ends up doing the first check. It should do the second check, finish up with it. There we go. Maybe you all can hear that. <laughs> I'm I'm not trying to I don't want to cut anything out with this and I'm trying to explain it a little bit more just for any uh, audio only listeners here but I'll go ahead and skip past that let's get this all loading this seems to be working fine so far at least just the game uh, so let's go to oh there we go it said it was loading so we need to go to is it going to be create a skater Yes, I just had to double check. It's Create Skater. So I'm pressing X. And I... There we go. Okay, Tony Hacks version 1.0. We were able to get this. Unlocking CD drive. Drive Region American. Unlocked successfully. Waiting for door open. Let's pop this open. Waiting for door close. Cool. So I'm clearly taking this out. And I'm going to take my CDR copy of Silent Hill. And you all are going to see actually what I'll do. Take my original one, I'm going to put it on top. So I've closed it. It says initializing CD. And let's see if this works. It's still initializing. It's spinning up. There we go. Oh my god, it works. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so cool to see. Oh my god, this is working. That's really cool. That's really cool. Okay, okay. I'm really happy to see this. <laughs> so just getting past, uh, I could even go to like load, for example, because this is actually the save that I end up finishing here. So we got all this like, that's awesome, man. This works. Very cool. <laughs> CDR copy of uh, Silent Hill seems to be working just fine. I'll wait for it to get in game here. Unless I think it's just going to take me back to the beginning. Let's see. Because I loaded up Next Fear. Yeah, there we go. And yep, you can see I took it out. Well, open this up and the FMV is not playing anymore. But either way, that's really cool to see. I am curious to see, though, how long this will take if we're just trying to realistically use this to boot up a game. So I'm going to do this process one more time just to show you all how long this might take. So I've kept track of it so far. We're booting up the game. Well, booting up the system. Seem to be booting up the game just fine. This time again, I'm using Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Just waiting for all this. I feel like the only thing that would uh, make this not be a daily driver would really just be all the long loading times with doing this whole procedure here. But again, I kind of just want to get some realistic time on here. So skipping past all of this seems to be loading. All right. Uh, it's scanning memory card. It's loading. Create a skater. 
we're gonna have to do the disk swap here cool waiting to open so it's taken one minute exactly to get to this point where we're at we are now initializing and let's see still initializing there we go okay so from complete system turn off at least in this time from completely turning off the system so cold boot turning it on with tony hawk in there loading this up and then booting up another game successfully this took me exactly one minute and 15 seconds so let's say it takes about a minute to do this entire procedure here which honestly isn't all too bad on here if you're wanting to play some games and you're wanting to not resort to swapping or modifying your system in any way so there we go that's awesome uh you just saw me right here for the first time and second time ever uh accomplish something i've been wondering and wanting to do since i was a kid just a <laughs> literally a dream for the playstation one right there where you could somehow mythically have a wow that is hard to take out but you could somehow mythically have a exploit save of some kind on your playstation one which will then allow it to be modified no swap discs no swap tricks no game shark no weird cartridges no mod chip nothing of the sort this is pretty awesome and I do want to say a big thank you, shout out, and congratulations to Marcos Vivas Del Sol or Socrum, I believe, yeah, Socrum8888 for being able to find all of this, compile it, explain it beautifully, and release this to the world. I'm not sure what's really going to come next of this in terms of exploits for the original PlayStation because I'll be honest, I was thinking that this was a pretty solid option right here, being able to reflash one of these with the Unirom, and it still certainly is, but of course it doesn't work on every single PlayStation as I have explained neither does this here but it's really cool that you can actually take this and just boil it down and put it on a memory card but of course you are going to need to make sure you can get the files there that's the hardest part and after that just like free mcboot you can copy the files onto other memory cards much easier i also think this is the beginning of looking into other original playstation games and seeing what other games are exploitable in this same method that we can port and use this save game exploit on That'd be really awesome to see as well, too. I mean, just today so far, we already have another one, which is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. If not out, it's going to be upcoming. So we have a few of the Tony Hawk games and probably many others that are going to be exploitable as well, too very cool to see anyways that is about it for this episode of mod chat i know just covering two topics here but these are two topics that i thought were really awesome and i wanted to cover a little bit more in depth and really literally play around with here now at the end of these episodes i do like to have a keyword of some kind and if you use this keyword in your comment on the youtube upload i'll know you made it to the end of this episode so you know what since we're talking about sequels and all that and since we had some really good conversation talking about trilogies last episode uh, i'm going to use the word sequel if you have a favorite sequel, if you don't like sequels all that much, if you have sequels that you really dislike and you just have to tell everyone about, or maybe if you just thought Tony Hawk 2 was a really great sequel to Tony Hawk 1, which I would certainly agree with, use the word sequel in your comment and I will know that you made it to the end. And you know what? I just realized if you're a DBA, maybe you'll use a different type of sequel in your comment. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching and listening, everyone. And until next time.